we're going to talk about backgrounds. I'm going to show you two different kinds of paper. I have the Mystique, which is right here, and then I have my this year's Hobonichi. So we're going to turn to today's page. I'm going to show you how you can do it on both because the papers are a bit different. So the first thing you want to do is get a baby wipe. It doesn't matter what kind of baby wipe it is. It doesn't matter. And then you're going to squeeze out, and I'm just going to squeeze it in my dirty paint water. Since it's Christmas, we're going to go with a beach green. What you need to remember is this is permanent when it dries. So if you want it to be darker, you just let it dry. So that's one way. Now when this dries, we'll add some more. And then let's say I'd want to do it where I put the pencil on it. Take your baby wipe. And you have to be kind of quick about these because like I said, once they dry, they're permanent. So. So that is one way to do background. Now, with the thinner paper, because that's orchid paper, with a thinner paper, I guess my wipe isn't quite wet enough. The only way to get it like super solid is to keep doing um, layers. Now let's see how it does like this. I'm doing a lighter touch because this paper is a lot thinner. Take your baby 
way. you have a pale green background. Okay, so now let's go back to the Mystique. We'll let this dry. So, on one, we'll add another layer of the green, and on the other, we'll add a layer of a different color. Okay, see it's getting darker green. Okay, so now we're going to add a layer of deep blue. We'll do deep blue. And the more you practice with this, the easier it will get, the more you'll see like what kind of patterns you can make, stuff that you like. There must be a sticker or something underneath there somewhere. Oh, it's a clip. If you're going to rub out any of the lines, you have to do it while it's wet. Because like I said, the Inktense pencils are permanent. They're not watercolor. You have to build onto those.
this shows you how to do that kind of background. This is a cross field, so it's the same paper as this Hobonichi, but these pages are all wet, so I'm going to show you how I did the background with the sky when I did the snowman. I took this brush. Is it this brush? Nope, it was this brush. See the blue? I did this brush. And I mixed the two different blues. Alright, so if I want a solid background, and you keep going over it until you don't really see the lines. And I could be wrong. I am not at all a professional watercolors. Okay, so here is what I do when I'm gonna leave this solid. You can take a cotton ball, you could take a paper towel, you could even take a baby wipe. But some things are going to put more, are going to soak up more water than other things. And then, like, if it's the sky and I want it swirly, I just take there. And you get what looks like a sky. Now, somebody was asking about, like, I had some journal pages that had different colors. And um, they were wondering about that. So I'm going to show you how I did that. I have this brush.
if you wanted to let it dry like that you could and it would be fine you could do that um, if you wanted to merge it onto this page you could put the pages together and then it would do um, I'll show you two different things so I could technically lighten it up a little you know get a little bit of color I could do that or I could do this like being in art class and voila now you could do just two colors or you could just do one color you don't have to do multiple colors do whatever you want to whatever kind of color theme you're thinking about or you could just throw color on um, one of the ways let's do this need something that will actually be really bold so we'll do purple and then I'll do white and you need it wet I do this with white paint a lot This is sort of a silvery color. But when you do this, you're going to make a mess. So I suggest doing it on top of something. One of the other things um, I wanted to cover in the background because I just used a bunch of vibrant colors in the other. But in this one, we're going to do um, like, I don't know, something a little bit dark and stormy. Um, I like to journal over the color pages. So, like, I would write over this. So, I have a bigger paintbrush this time. And we're going to start with a deep violet. Now, one of the things with the Intense Pencils is the more water you have, the lighter the color, the less vibrant it is. So, and you just kind of keep turning the pencil. And I'm going to do this in circular motions because we have the moon out. This is super moon. And I'm going to end up doing um, alright. Now I have a uh, Deep indigo. And what I'm doing is putting the ink from the pencil onto the wet brush. I can get rid of some of the water.
they don't blend unless they're wet very well. So And it's been a very long time since I've done this. So, um, the more that you do it, the better you get at it. Just like with anything else. Okay, so we'll stick that one over there to the side. Deep blue. Now what I'm going to do is kind of cover all of this with this deep blue, it's got too much water. gonna rinse my brush Now the moon isn't really yellow, but it is a super moon and it's like super glowing. So let's take While I wait on the yellow to kind of dry some, I'm going to take Chinese Gray. Ooh, that's not good. We don't want it to come out green. Nope, that is green. No wonder. So I'm going to take that up wondering why it looked green because it is green
take just a tad more of the gray. There's something on my brush. I think it's the shavings from the pencil. I'm going to wait for that to dry because it's just too wet to do anything with now, so... So I'm going to take a little bit of the white shiny paint from here. So I wanted the moon to have that yellow undertone, but we don't want it to be yellow. We just want it to kind of glow.
So you can see how it looks like it's clouds. There we go. Now it'll dry. And then I can write today's date on it, which is the 13th, I think. <laughs> it's, the, it's the super moon slash full moon. We didn't really get to see it very well tonight. Not like last night when I took the pictures because it's cloudy, rainy here. But this maybe will help. So you've got different kinds of backgrounds. Like you can do something like this. Um, this is a lot of color and I did it so you could really see how it does. This is not something I, I would normally choose color wise, but this would be perfect for something like spring for like Easter or something like that. But I hope that this helps. I am in no way, shape or form a professional. And the thing about the Derwent is that the less water um, like I said, the darker, the more vibrant they are. I think they're a lot of fun. I love them for like vibrant. When I want something to stand out, uh, a, a certain color, um, I'll use these. I'll take my little paintbrush and get it at the end of it. Or I'll color on like the acetate like this and then pick it up with a brush. But that, I hope helps. <laughs> Thanks for watching, y'all. Bye.